this move or was it just and we are live from me from maui boss rooting from southern california and butterbean from where bean where are you hi i'm in atlanta in the dallas page crib oh my god you made it the house of reckoning the pain oh. factor it's all right here <laughs> and, and you've been there for a few hours Right, I've been here ahead. all day so far. Yeah, we been um, here for the next ninety days. Yeah, you know, guys, we were wondering out there, people watching, that before uh, we went live, Boss and I and our producer Rachel were asking Bean about the house and the people, and you know, he said, "Ah, oh, you know, everyone's really cool. It's only a couple of tiny little things." Big smile on his face, and we're asking, and and Boss, I didn't, you, did you answer? How how do you think Bean's going to look ninety days from now? A we still have that smile on his face, and B, will all the people in the house still be alive? That's the thing. <laughs> don't recognize him. Maybe he's got long hair, he's got a beard, walks around with a figure six pack. People go like, who's that guy? You know? <laughs> I get along with everybody here so far. Yeah, it's all a good, good deal. Of so, course, they're going to go along with you because you beat the shit out of them if they don't. That's how it goes. <laughs> There's one person, I, the one person here knows who I am, but the others don't have a clue. Oh well, wow. Okay. So tell, tell, they tell us about it. They don't know what that is. They don't, you know. I was telling one of the people in here. I said, "Yeah, I make a a mean butter bean stew." They're like, "I love butter beans." I go, "It has no butter beans in it. It's just my name. I named it after myself." And they they didn't get that. They don't oh. know. Uh, they well, don't they know. find out. They got ninety days to find out. Hey, we got oh, people from Australia and France watching us. That's awesome. Hey, we got a couple of quick hellos. Sorry. That's good. Sorry, guys. Sean Barry. Sorry. Ronald Elvis from Atlanta. Yeah, we get hellos from, from Sweden, from France, from Australia. That That's oh, yeah. a beautiful thing. Here we are in the U.S. So, Bean, describe to us, if you don't mind, what's going on. But let, but let me set this up first for those who – Maybe in Sweden and France and Australia don't know. Butterbean is in Atlanta at the Diamond Dallas Page Crib, taking part in a three-month experiment, which is a reality show where they're going to turn Bean. I mean, Bean already is a warrior, so we can't say turn Bean into a warrior, but kind of remake you from top to bottom physically and see if you can reemerge like Page at Dallas Page's famous Arthur did only better, bigger, stronger, faster, all that stuff. Yeah, he's already got that going. Woo! Don't do that, you guys. We could get sued. Um, <laughs> I hope Paige didn't hear that. But, um, ah, that's right. That's right. Boom. Um, tell us, man, what's what's the house like? What's the vibe like? What's happened on your first day, which is it the is first day of the rest so, of your life? I was supposed to be here yesterday, but my car broke down. Matter of fact, let's back up even in the morning. I had a flat tire. I got that fixed down the road. My alternator went out. So it was a two and a half hour tow ride back home. Grabbed the other car and I zipped out the next morning to come down here. So I made it here this morning around 10, 11 o'clock. People, people here is great. It's a real good vibe in the house. I think, I think we're going to do a lot of good here. What kind of house is it? Is it a big, big house? Is it a, what is it? Dallas is, I guess, one of Dallas's first houses that he owned. Oh, okay. And he, you know, he never sold it, so he's kept it. And this is where he shot some of the other videos, like the resurrection of Jake the Snake and uh, Arthur, and you know, so it's it's a, it's a nice, it's a big house. I think there's five, six, six, seven bedroom. Oh, nice! Yeah. Wow. Yeah, boss. I, I've been there before, boss. It is kind of like. It's a term. I think I call it like a McMansion or something like that. You know, like a mini mansion. It's big. It's so nice. House, I don't consider my house a mansion. It's, it's probably twice this size. All right, cool. Hey, more for more more fans from Australia. Tyron, so, how you doing? Man? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Bean, tell us. It's five. It's ten o'clock there now. Hey, and great couple of family. Sorry. Oh, that's all right. And yeah, Canada. You get Thanks, a lot Dad. of encouragement. So Man, we got a small open world. So being 10 p.m. where you are, that means you had dinner. What'd you guys have for dinner? It was awesome. 
kind of. <laughs> right. We had, we had brown rice. Yeah. With uh, ground turkey on top and Brussels sprouts and a uh, salad. All right. Yeah. Healthy food. Healthy food. No beer. Yeah. No Crown and Jack or nothing. <laughs> There's probably calling that, believe it or not. And uh, I I expect that's how you'll be eating for the next uh, three months, son. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm good with it. Yeah, can I'm you sure imagine? Be, I'm like, sure it'll be things like uh, white egg whites and yep. and uh, spinach and all that good healthy stuff. So that that to me is like one of the best parts of this, boss. You you eat clean, don't you? For yeah, the most part. I try. Yeah, I do my this hidden is- in there. A little bit beyond clean, I think it's gluten. Yep, gluten free. Uh, it's pretty much everything free. Yep, no dairy. Yep, uh, See, which, is, which is going to help the inflammation. Yep. I'm already been constipated. constipated. I'm pooped in two days. So I don't know what I'm going to do, <laughs> but I got a bidet ready to go when I do. See, so See Bob, like. I know that you. I know that you know about diet. I mean, I'm pretty educated, but my diet's not clean. I live by myself. I don't really take care of myself too well. And I like to me, it would be a dream to be in that situation for three months, where someone that really knows their stuff is just making it happen for you. To me, I think some people might think that's deprivation. I love that idea. I don't know about you. Have you ever yeah. had something called quinoa? Quinoa, of course. Yeah. Ah, I came with that today. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I, eat that a lot. I make a porridge out of it. So I take like an um, like a, a like a cup of quinoa, and I, this is the way I do it, right? I, I have an uh, I take two half cups because otherwise it's too much. I take an um, how you call it where you put coffee in hot coffee, that a thermo thermo can. So then I put then I add boiling water on it and put a lid on it. That's the only thing I'm doing. And then I wait for like 45 minutes. You take the lids off and it's completely filled. It's all sucked in now. Then I throw it in a blender. I add some um, uh, some honey and then I drink it. And it's it's got a oh, lot of carbs. Good. It's great. It's great. And it you know, no no bloating, no nothing. And it's just it's it's a, one of these superfoods they call it. You know, and it makes me oh, just we don't, we don't get honey. No sweet and nothing. It's not like yeah. Yeah. That's harder, yeah. But but still, it's not that bad if you do it. With, like, I'm really good <laughs> with eating things. If it's good for me, I don't really care how it tastes. Yeah, I just yeah. do it, you know? And people go, oh, yeah, exactly. I just don't breathe, breathe in or uh, don't smell. I just drink it. Then, you know, I never had a problem with that. And I actually almost always, everything I take, I take for the effect, whatever it is. So if I drink alcohol, it's not because of the taste. I, I like the taste with it if it's good, but I drink it more for the effect. That's why it's not good for me to drink alcohol. You know? But I have to, with, with food also, you know, I can literally get beets and and, and, um, and the spinach and I put it in a blender and I blend it all to a pulp with water and I just drink it. Yeah, it's horrible. But oh, that sounds it terrible. Good. Yeah. That sounds awful, boss. I don't know, but, but it makes me feel good. I get it. Um, I get it. My doctor, you know, he performs gastric bypass surgeries on people. This guy was gaining weight after his gastric bypass because I told him he could eat any liquid diet, you know, as long as it's liquid. He was mixing pizza and beer and putting it in the blender. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Wonder why he wasn't losing weight. Pizza and beer. You can't, help a guy. you can't help a guy like that, man. Not for nothing. What do yeah. You do? I mean, you got to be a freaking moron. Say, hey, we got Kasim in the background. Hey, he's here with us. Hey guys, um, we I, I need to bring we need to bring somebody on here. In the meantime, hello Chris from Canada. We got another greeting from Australia. It's good to see you guys. And we are going to bring we're going to get to everyone's questions today. So please stay with us. Tee up some good questions. We're going to dive in. But I'm happy in the meantime to welcome our new co-host, all around good guy, three times NFL Pro Bowler and family man extraordinaire, Kasim Osgood. Hey, hey, how we doing, guys? Yeah, I <laughs> yeah I you were talking about protein shakes, man. I, I've been doing my kids all day. My wife's been working a, a long shift, so I've been on dad duty, and she just got home, so I made dinner for everybody, and I put mine in a blender, 
<laughs> came upstairs. Had to get set, but my, my son scratched his knee right before I got on, so I had to get him a Band-Aid and set up. Uh, so, yeah. and, and did you make a Coca-Cola and uh, and pizza milkshake? <laughs> no, beer. No, not at all. <laughs> but what, what do you give your kids to eat, uh, Kasim? What is, what, what is, you keep them healthy, or you like also your little fried this, fried this uh, burgers? Yeah, we did gluten-free pasta with some uh, some uh, ground-up turkey with spaghetti sauce. So a little, little, little healthy side of spaghetti. But, uh, yeah, my, my wife is uh, big on health foods. She thinks that the American diet is, is horse crap. She's originally from Lebanon. So she's oh, like, yeah, you can eat like shit. <laughs> so there's much better food over there, trust me. And healthy. And they get all these crazy remedies. Like Pakistan, yeah. Lebanon, you know, all these. Oh, take this. Uh, and that will help with your inflammation. And you take it and go like, oh, shit, that really hurts. You know, immediately. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah my mother. Like, so much better, guys. You got what? I said good old soul food tastes so much better. Oh, oh man. Man. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid it. Now that I'm not running as much, I'm trying to avoid it. But those oxtails, they be calling me. You know what I'm talking about, Kasim. Oh, yeah. Turn of grains, okra, and sliced onions. Oh, man. Man, I mean, you, you can put anything in that deep fryer. It's going to taste good, especially that fried okra. <laughs> you try to get kids to eat okra, fry it up. They'll eat it all day. You know, what, what my wife said we had to buy for a long time, we find about an air dryer. Yes. Uh, air fryer. Mm. Good. It's, it's, I use it so much. I put like a whole chicken, you know, chicken thighs. I put them in there with herbs. Just put them in 20 minutes, and they're crispy. You get it's, – it's amazing. Zero fat, zero nothing. It's they're unbelievable. So <laughs> you, you guys, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling kind of jealous, I have to admit. It's like – Boss and Kasim, you've got your wives who are very health food oriented, making this happen for you. Being you have Diamond Dallas Page making this happen for you. And I you know, hear my chef. dogs. My dogs cannot cook. Sorry, Bean. We got our own chef, man. I you guys chef. all do. And it's like I'm sitting here in Hawaii got, with my chicken rice and, and a piece of chicken and, and a broccoli, and that's it. Or maybe a Brussels sprout. <laughs> Rick, Rick, Rick. <laughs> What's that, Kasim? I said the uh, the dogs had you on the carnivore diet. But I, I'm telling you, man, it's like find our food outside. That's what they're doing to you. They keep I, you. I, I can I can safely say I've never tried to use this show for selfish personal purposes. But I guess if we have a big inner audience out there tonight, if there's any ladies out there who are watching this that are healthy cooks and you want to come to Hawaii for a while, <laughs> hey, and you're really good looking. I mean, if you're really nice, also, please hit me up. Anyway, <laughs> you're gonna be funny. They have to be funny. Maybe that's what funny. the women say about guys, right? Be funny, be funny number one. Yeah, right. All okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Just turn, turn, just turn. I'm getting a great vibe out of the whole house. I, mean, I think it's I think it's gonna do a lot of people that's here a lot of good. I so it's it's an overall good vibe so far? Yeah, I got I'm getting good vibes off everybody. I mean it's 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 a very motivated house right now. This is competition 101 all over again, man. It's first day training camp. How do you feel? Like you got any uh, butterflies, jitters, excited? No, you know, I've done TV stuff before, so it's nothing, you know, you know, wearing a mic all day is no, nothing really changed to me. But, you know, and, and somebody just asked where it's going to air. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where they're going to air it yet. Yeah. We're just yeah, yeah. The, so it, it's going to be, I would say, three – at least six to eight months before anybody knows anything where it's going to air. Yeah, that's just that's the TV process. You know, it's like, you know, the, the way Paige is going about this, sometimes, you know, you'll you'll get it. And Kasim, you know all this. Boss, you know this. Bean, you know this. You get an order from Netflix. And here's your budget. We need X amount of episodes. Paige is like one of the last of the true entrepreneurs out there. So his deal is let's make it. Let's make it great. And you've seen his product before. His TV stuff is phenomenal. And he'll go out to the best home on his terms after it's in the can and they can see what he has. So I, I know it'll it'll end up somewhere like it'll be a strong vehicle, but we just don't know where yet. Well, Diamond has a show out right now that just it's, a, it's got great reviews on it. It's out on Netflix called Guardians of Justice. Yep. Oh, wow. And he's one of the main characters on it. Now, I was watching a little bit of it earlier. Called Guardians of Justice. It, Justice. It's on Netflix right now. What so, is it? Uh, is it is scripted or is it is it a what is it? That's like, like a uh, cartoon slash realistic type show. 
Okay. That he's in. It's something he's in right now. Yeah, th okay. this oh, is on. Guardians of Fortune. He's being played right now. And what yeah. was it, Guardians of what? Guardians of Justice. Justice. It's on Netflix. Guardians of Justice. Yeah, right. yeah, this is made on. It's a great thing. The butter bean pen, which mine butter still hasn't pen. arrived yet, or my razor, but that's all right. I'm not taking well, it. Well, in three months, you're going to get one, right? <laughs> all right. That's cool. Yeah, boss, uh, this has been Dallas's big project for years now. He, um, you know, like everything he does, like yourself, he's serious. And he is hoping to crack the A-list, you know, in terms of being an actor. And I've booked, I've booked Paige in a lot of movies now. The last one I booked him in, he co-starred with uh, with Don Johnson and Olga Kurylenko, um, oh, yeah. just sold yesterday to Savon. So he's a good actor, and oh, nice. this is like a big, big, high pro high profile project that could actually push him over that edge. So let's uh, good wishes to our friend. Oh, definitely, that's amazing. Thank you. And he will be on the show soon, as B knows as well. He wanted to uh, he wanted to get this kicked off first. And I think a couple of weeks from now. Going on, trying to deal with everybody. And, you know, he's got so much going on right now. It's crazy. Yep. And I, I think um, in a couple of weeks we'll have Dallas on. And J uh, Jake Roberts will join us for the same show. Jake the Snake as a guy who's been through the whole process with Dallas. And then there'll be Bean who's going through it now. That'll be, a, that'll be an interesting outing for sure. So, oh, by the way, I see Ray? No, you go. Rick. Yes. How's Flex doing? Oh, how's Flex doing? Um, not Nothing has changed with Flex. And this guy, you know, people, people use the word literally out of context all the time these days. Literally this, literally that. He literally is fighting for his life right now. Um, it, it could happen anytime. He could be around for years. I don't know. It's that precarious for him. One thing I do know for sure. Like, you know, when you go to the doctors and they give you the pain chart, you know, are you a zero to a 10? And this guy is, Flex is legitimately, realistically, constant eight or above at all times. Oh, I don't geez. know. I don't know how he is surviving and coping the way he copes. And, uh, you know, I, I do hope to have him on again at one point. He may or may not be. I'd love to have um, him and Kasim on together. I think that'd be really cool. That'd and awesome. uh, we'll, we'll see. But. All we can keep doing is just like sending our best wishes and, and praying for our friend because yep. he's having a hard time. Oh man! Yeah, I can't like, call back. Man. I don't, I don't, I'll be honest. I don't pray for a lot of folks, but he's one I did pray for. Yeah. Not going to bring him to the show whatsoever, but uh, yeah, I did pray for him. I do, I do pray for him. Him and another friend of mine. I remember this. Yep. So, yeah, uh, me too. He's every day of mine. So uh, let's uh, all together. The power of a lot of people together. He can do a lot of good work for Flex Wheeler. Yep. So we will we will see this guy back before long. Right there. There, there we go. Look at this guy here. Boss looks like Sean Connery, Aaron Cooper. I just want to say this really fast because before we keep on going, thank you for that. Because I always said when I was young that if I grow up, I want to look like Sean Connery. I thought I saw, hey, it's working. So thank you for that. And off he goes. I got that to look forward to. Such a What an icon. Sean Connery was an icon. Oh, man. Unbelievable. The way The Rock. Remember that uh, movie with, um, what's his name? Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, that it was crazy. But as a James Bond, you know, he was also a cool Bond. He was He's just a cool dude. What's the best movie you've made you had the most fun on? Me? Yeah. Oh, well, it had to be uh, Here Comes the Boom, right? Because that was the it, – it was working together with Henry Wrinkler and Salma Hayek and then Kevin James, of course. But Kevin is a close friend of mine for many years. But to work with the fonts, yeah. I mean, are you kidding? That was a big thing for me. And also Salma Hayek. And then finding out that they're freaking – Crazy. I mean, Salma Hayek is such a blast to work with because you go right. like, oh, she's so, you know, comes so a billionaire married with a billionaire. You can, no, she'll drink a freaking Coke and crash the can on her head. Yeah, I mean, she's, she's fun. And, and, and so uh, was uh, Henry Winkle as well. Really nice and sweet guy. 
my main goal, I probably said it on the show already, was here to uh, to annoy him, to see if I could get him angry, because it's very hard to get him angry. So uh, yeah. I would constantly be annoyed, annoying him with certain little things. It was very funny. It was very funny. He would steal my, my chair the whole time. I th yeah, I think we talked about this on a, my anti-gravity chair. And, uh, and I can't kick him out. He's the freak of Hans. You know, so... Uh, <laughs> So at the end, his assistant bought one for him. He came to me and says, where can you get those things? I said, they're 45 bucks. I mean, so it's not even an expensive thing. But on a set, you know, you go to Bad Bath and Beyond. They have them there. They probably have a more so it's called anti-gravity. Very simple thing. But uh, boy, it's a really good chair if you have to. So for you, Bean, if you have to hang around and do a lot, that's the chair for you to get. For 50 bucks, below 50 bucks, you're completely relaxed laying in there. Takes any pressure off the body. It's nice. I'm, I'm 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 hurting today. I mean, my pain level is pretty high right now. I've done a lot. Shit, man. Hey, you guys got acting day one. Well, this ain't acting. It's it's like real life. Go at it and just live. So, what did you do physically today, Bean? Did you guys do like a, a DDPY workout, or what happened? Well, Rick, I just signed a seventy-five page contract that says I can't tell you shit. <laughs> uh, <ABA. laughs> all right there you go the contract all right okay, wait, wait, wait. but so just yeah, imagine you're fun. somebody else so jump into character for somebody else just just throw it online people Dallas would love that when you tell this online why would he why would he put my foot up to the ceiling and I, I got it like almost it, it was like inches from touching oh here we yeah. go this is good. This is interesting. I got to see this now. Yeah. And then we had, when we had to do on the handstand, I said, if I fall, it's going to mess up your floor, man. <laughs> <laughs> I did the whole handstand thing. You know, I got up up there. Did you really? Wow. You did the handstand against the wall, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're fully wow. extended? Yeah. You believe that, right? That's amazing. Oh, yeah. You believe that? I don't know. You're saying it, so I want to believe it. I wouldn't believe it too much. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But believe you this, for some reason, Fair. eating all this healthy stuff, I'm not pooping regularly. And this is not good. I'm constipated. It's bad. Yeah. Wow. But you have a bidet. I will, let it, I will let you know how my daily bowel movement is. And I haven't had you one know. in two days. It ain't so hot. Well, I, like I always well, say, I can the I always say at this juncture, thank you for sharing. And, um, you know, could, next week, everything passes and I'll let y'all. I'll, I'll, I'll I know you will. Me. We know you'll let us know. We know that. Heated here, so I'm hot. I'm ready to go. Heated bidet. You know, Heated bidet. I'm, 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 they're golden, man. They hook us up good. The <laughs> gold, gold plated bidet. You can take it with you. Exactly. You know, but the same, but hey. boss knows from the day you know the day we started the show, you know, Bean always has something to say about his uh, you know inner workings, and um, uh, you know, boss, I, one of these days when we really when the show takes off and we have a budget for live graphics and everything, we <laughs> we have to have like a one that says every week is called Butter Beans Bathroom. I, just, I don't know about you, I can I can visualize. That. You know, we'll have like the flushing toilet and the whole anyway, bidet. Anyway, sorry, I'm digressing. <laughs> hey, Rick, somebody asked who who was my uh, person that hit me the hardest. You know, when you're fighting in Boston, mm -hmm. probably say the same thing. It's not like you don't really feel the punch. It's like a vibration. Yeah, You don't feel, I mean, I, I couldn't tell you who hit the hardest, but it's more like a vibration you feel. It ain't really a. I, I could never tell. I don't know about you, boss, but I can never tell. I, I think I've been hit harder in training than I was ever in a fight. You know, and then you have that flesh. And do you hear that? That you hear that in your ears? It goes. And then it's like, and then you're back. And then I had in, the, in, in training, I had that, but I never had it in a fight. So. Yeah. I've had my bell rung once. Never been knocked out or, you know, but I've, had, I've been hit, you know, kicked to the head one time and that. That, that you could hear it in my ears. Yeah. Who, who was that? Who, who was that? Who kicked you in the head? Cabbage. 
Cabbage. Oh, cabbage. Yeah, they, they were just talking about it here. Uh, here, let me see. There we go. Being versus cabbage. cabbage. Epic. Epic. Teeth flying. Teeth flying. Four times. <laughs> Crazy. Brutal wars. I got depleted before Rasheen Mathis caught me. I ran a route too deep my rookie year. Ran right into a sitting corner. He put his top of his head right on my chin. Took me off the air. I was flying in the air and I saw two cleats flying in the air. I was like, well, I have cleats like that. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Those are my cleats. <laughs> Blown up. Kiss him. Who was that? Uh, Rasheed Mathis. He was a corner for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Got you good, huh? Yeah, he caught Whoa. me. Yeah, I learned quickly to make sure that you run your route the right depth. You have to be exact in the NFL. You're going to meet somebody you don't want to meet. Yeah. Right. right. Guarantee uh, it. Very good. How much? Then, hey, how much fights did you do in your career approximately? What would you say your favorite combination is always worth? You know, my favorite punch, over and right. You just throw the left and throw the over and right. That's my favorite. It, it's never let me down. Yeah. You know, I probably had total 300 fights all together. Wow. Jeez. When you count boxing, kickboxing, tough man, I've had over 300. That is a professional. That is a seasoned veteran. And I'm still talk. Yeah. Within your – your high order of thinking too. This is this is amazing. I won't remember five minutes from now, but which goes to show that your, the title speaks for itself. The king of four rounds, a man with perfectly pretty white teeth, can still speak in four senses and remembers his name after you call him twice. Exactly. Yeah, and and honest to God, being you know not just because you're a friend and because you're a co-host, I've never even remotely seen a clue that would make me think you'd been hit in the head before, you know, the kind of, the kind of things that unfortunately guys like Gary are experiencing yeah. boss. We know all too well. Um, yeah. I've, I've never even seen a notion of that in you before. So that's amazing. That's fantastic. Well, most fighters have a neck. I don't have a neck, so I don't get that big jar. <laughs> <laughs> right. I actually was offered to play, 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 play pro ball at one time, you know, you got a, you got a, you got a little looking at you. Awesome. I heard. Oh, hey, buddy. Oh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Brett Fire hey, manager. Baby. He goes, I can, I can get you, get you, you know, a center position, Bean. So yeah, I passed. And then the boss. Who's the Who's the biggest person you ever fought? Uh, well, that would be the last guy. He was two sixty five, right? Ruben Valerial. Okay, war power. Yeah. So yeah. Did, did you never did like any of those. You never fought those Pride freak show matches, anything like that. No, and in, uh, in in Pancras it was. They were all about this. I was doing the, the five parts, the same what I weigh now, two ten, two five, and you know, and uh, and that, that was you know because there were guys who were one seventy or one eighty. I mean, and it was all one weight class. So, yeah, never too big. Uh, over there, but I always, I, I never mind, you know, because most of the time, and especially at that time, the big guys would run out of gas, <clears throat> you know, so you have to just survive for four minutes or so, and then you're going to start looking really good because then you're the little guy who beats up the big guy. <laughs> so, How does that feel to have, after you knock somebody out, to have the crowd just erupt? The, I guess I, I, it's the craziest thing. It's very hard to let go, right, Bean? It's the, one of the oh, coolest right. things ever. People go nuts. Yeah. Or yeah. Well, you got them in something that you worked on also. And most of the time, I come with the combination that I knock somebody out with, I did work on that before. Yeah. Some people would say, oh, no, we'll bring itself the knockout. I go, no, you can force it. You know, you just do it over and over again. You know, I take three combinations close distance, three combinations far distance. And on the back, that's the thing I run hundreds of times. And then when, the, when you do it correctly and you film yourself once in a while to make sure it's still good, then – you know, a perfect setup will always work if you do it good. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy. And in Japan especially, right? Because in Japan, wow. it's so Eight quiet. Thousands. Nothing. And then when you do it, what? Yeah. And then it goes quiet again, you know? Freaking. Yeah, it's cool. Very cool. That's amazing. So w when you see, like, Warpath standing across from you, 55 pounds bigger at least, 
is is there anything in your thought? I mean, I get the strategy is different. You're going to wear him down. I understand that. But is there anything in your mind that that changes? Is there any kind of additional, I guess, fear factor is probably the wrong term, but you know what I mean, additional concern yeah. of any sort? No, no, because it's, uh, you know, they're slower. There's no way he's got my speed, you know, and I used to trade also with light guys, like 155 guys uh, trade in sparring because I will pick up their speed. So I start getting, becoming faster and heavy guys I fight with as well. So I get used to the pressure or whatever they want to do. But most of them are way better on my feet than, you know, so I, no, I, I would, you know, if you have like a, nowadays, these 185ers who are freaking 6'3", six, six, you know, and it's the same with 205. You got to get, I, I would fight at 205 now, maybe 185, because it's easy for me to cut, I think. But anyway, 205 right now, I'm finding giants. Like if, if I stand next to John Jones, I mean, he's, he's yeah. way taller than I am, you know, and he's got that reach and everything. So then, yeah, I'd rather fight a weight class lower than to fight a freaking guy like that. And he's good everywhere, you know. Oh, yeah, the, the light heavyweights now, the 205s, are built like Kasim. They really, they, they, they would look like Kasim with his height yeah. and shape and the whole nine yards. It's a different game, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. Incredible. So, Bean, your biggest opponent was who, Zulu Zeno? Probably Zulu or Royster. Royster was a big oh, dude. Oh, right. That guy was a beast. beast. Well, it really sucks about the Royster fight. When he first came out, he came up with a flying knee and broke my sternum right Jeez. off the bat. I ended up beating him, but yeah, I was done after that. Then I, I ended up having a fight two weeks later again with a broken sternum. Oh. Yeah. And then two weeks after that, I fought again. So I had, I had three fights that one month. Jeez. With That's a broken dangerous. sternum. Yeah, because I had mine, it's now completely out, but it was pushed in in a fight. And I literally had the doctor, I said, I don't want this thing to puncture my lungs. I don't know how it works on the inside, you know, because it was pointing inside. So, uh, yeah, you got to watch out with that. So there's a question. I broke my hand two weeks prior to that in a fight. And I broke it bad. Shit. But I didn't tell the commission because they wouldn't let me fought. They'd abandon me. Yeah. So I just I took my finger and pulled it, and you could watch it pop back into place. The doctor said I did it perfect. They said, you said it right. The things you learned. Yeah. So the question for all three of you guys. Good fighter, he's gonna fight injured or not. That's it. There's a, there's a question being question for all three of you guys, and let's go with uh, Kasim first. Question yeah. from Mike Jeff for all three of you guys: How do you deal with stress before you fight, and do you have a routine? And Kasim, in your case, before football games. Uh for me, I, I love the uh, the routine. You wake up early. Uh, we have home games. I wake up early, go pick up my family, go get breakfast, uh, go to church, church for about an hour, then uh, drop the family off outside the stadium, and then I drive in the tunnel. Uh, for me, it's just a whole ton of music, um, rehearsing all the plays that I was supposed to be in on, uh, plays I'm contrib contributing on, stay in the playbook, and uh, make sure I'm stretched, ready to go. I, stre I stretch a, a ton. Like the whole time I'm preparing mentally, I'm stretching. So I just take the whole time to stretch so I'm limber. So right when I hit the field, I'm ready to go. And I look for the first person you pissed off at, and I start a beef. And that way, it just gets you going. It gets you in the game. It gets you in that that firing on that, that those brain waves. So, you gotta find you gotta find beef early on in the game to get you motivated. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have uh, predicted that in you. That's interesting. All right. So you you go out looking for it to fire oh, yeah. yourself up. I mean, the, the, the trash talking, the mental aspect of the game is huge on the field. And there's just a whole lot of John going back and forth. And if you can control that that mind game, that mindset, you can get the guys. More and more about you know overcoming you rather than doing their job. So I'm trying to get them focused on me rather than doing their job. Yeah, what you be? Yeah, I, I was really never stressed out. I always stayed relaxed. I mean, the, the more relaxed you are, the, the the less energy it takes. You know, me being as big as I am, I had to save all my energy to. So I try to you know the stress. I just don't let it bug me. What's going to happen is going to happen. You know, I, in my mind, I already had him knocked out before I walk in the ring, so I had no nothing to worry about. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I the same thing with me. For me, everything is relaxed. And I need to yeah. – nobody, no aggression, nothing in the thing. There's a lot of laughing. We're playing games. We're playing – you know, everybody's just happy. I remember the last fight that somebody in my corner, and it was the first time we worked in my corner, and 
he's suddenly in the middle of the in the warm up. He says, "Can I talk to you outside?" He says, "Sure." I walk outside. He says, "This man, this asshole is trying to get money from your family, and he's talking about my opponent." I go, "Hey, stop right there." He goes, "What?" I say, "I don't need to talk. I'm good. I want to stay calm." Because once I get aggressive, you know, and I'm already a hothead, I start loading up my punches. You start telegraphing. You know, and I always say, you know, if you if you have two guys equally skilled, the guy who can stay the calmest will beat the guy, not aggression guy, nine out of ten times, hundred percent. Yeah. You don't get tired. I mean, it, your energy. That people always wonder how I, I'm, how my stamina was able to go so far. If you stay relaxed, you don't burn as much energy. Yep. That's. That's exactly. I, I'm the one that goes to poke to see who's ready on their game. But a lot of people they practice to stay calm. You know, I go and test it. Hey, he's not calm yet. I'm gonna get that guy. And you just go, you attack, get him off their game. It's it's such a powerful tool if you can yep. get somebody to focus on you rather than on their 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 training. Look at the DS brothers. The way they start talking to the people, they start pissing them off, and look what it does for them. You know, yeah. it's so such a smart thing to do. You know, and it is. Oh, this is also a good one. What's best to eat before a fight, and how long before? Uh, and this I, I, is uh, this this question comes from Harjit Singh, and yeah. So, boss and Bean, take that before the fight, and then let's uh, get Kasim on uh, pregame yeah, as well. It's probably the same. For me, it's really well, like food. pasta. Pasta, and, you know, I won't eat. I won't eat five, six hours for a fight. I mean, I you know maybe longer than that, but definitely pasta and, and some carbs. Yeah, I, I do potatoes. No, not it's just potatoes, but I can eat a freaking pan full. And same like you. I do at least four hours, five hours. So I want it completely to be digested before I go in. And I can do also, I can drink two and a half cups or maybe three cups of oatmeal. But also I do this a couple hours before. And then in between, I only drink water. No sweets, no nothing. Keep the body completely relaxed and stretch like a sim does. Stretching is a lot, you know, and especially in martial arts or in any sport where you have to breathe. <clears throat> because I always talk about this, right? But the, your, your chest expansion, this is how you breathe, right? That's opens up your lungs. But if you did a lot of weight training, all these muscles are going to be tight. It's very hard to expand a lot. So the more you stretch yourself and your upper body and your, the ribs in between the ribs, the intercostals, the more expansion you have, the easier for you becomes to breathe. You know, a lot of people forget that. I knew guys who would do oh. pressing the day before the fight. I go, dude, that's the dumbest thing that you do. Like 10 days before, you don't want to, don't want to do any power training anymore. Keeping it loose, keeping it loose, keeping it loose. That's everything. Stretching, stretching, stretching. So I'm 100% on board with Kasim as well. Yeah, for me, pregame, I would do uh, the night before is when I would start my nutrition, where I go two to one protein to carbs. So I load up on protein the night before. Let your body get into a deep rest to have a lot of proteins reserves so that you can start stacking those reserves. And you build the channels and you wake up in the morning, you go two to one carbs to protein. So you have more carbs that start to go on those reserves you had from the night before the protein. It starts getting that protein synthesis linked into you can start building the long branch chain amino acids into the muscles. So you're actually recovering as you're expending energy. So you just do a little roll reversal where you go heavy protein the night before, then heavy carbs in the morning to get that protein synthesis going. And how many hours is your lot before the, the showdown is your last meal? Oh, four hours for me. Yeah, see, yeah. also, we just hold you over there. That's good. I saw guys on the day of the fight eating burgers with their entire, their entire gym. No, burgers with fries. And I, I, I wanted to say something, but I thought I'm not going to do it because then I'm going to maybe it be inside their head because then they start thinking about how bad that is for you. Yeah. It's gonna, so I figured, you know, probably they did it before, especially when the coach is also eating burgers. I go, dude. It's the most insane thing I've ever seen. I've seen, oh, Mark Kerr, he would eat chocolate before. Yeah. The, he would have a bag, a Ziploc bag with freaking M&Ms and you name it, and he would just freaking eat that. The, gave him the dark chocolate is the best because that helps boost your testosterone right for, a pre, for, a, for a fright. It's the fastest way to get the dopamine levels going in the brain and yeah. testosterone going. But that's and the dark chocolate the, without the sugars. Sure. The synthetic sugars are the, oh, my God, you're going to shut down all your pathways right away. Uh, That's what I mean. I used to honey before a fight, though, boss. I would, I would take, I need a little bit of honey before a fight, like maybe an hour, half hour before I went on. I, I need some honey. Yeah, yeah honey's pathway. I, I only use honey here as well. Even, even in coffee, I use honey. Honey's that quick pathway carbs, easy to break down in the body. Fast food source burns quick though. And, and what did you say, Kasim? The black chocolate raises your testosterone level as well. Yes, uh, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. 
Yep, 70% or more, and uh, it, it raises your testosterone. I mean, you know, it's incremental, but you have to eat a ton. So if I mean, he's going through bags of it, then it's, yeah. it's going to give him a little, you know, competitive advantage, but nothing what that goes like on the serum levels to be tested off, tested for. Okay. I fought in Connecticut one time, and the commission was almost retarded. They would not allow you to eat nothing once you got to the arena or drink anything but water, and they had orange slices in the dressing room for everybody to eat. And I'm telling you what, there's three people after the fight, they puked orange everywhere. Okay. <laughs> they were sucking down orange slices. I mean, that's the commission was retarded. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But guys, the um the first the first time I ever cornered for a fighter was at UFC 13. I cornered a guy named Tony Holm. I'm sure no one remembers him. He was Ludwig Borga in WWE, big six foot five, three hundred pound guy, looked scary as all hell. Back when those of us who didn't know thought the biggest, scariest looking guys were the toughest guys. Little little did we know. And uh, he fought Randy Couture in Randy's debut fight. So you can imagine how that went for for our team. And uh, the um, it was, the whole story is funny. I have to say the whole story sometime. It's really funny. But the day of the his fight prep was till 3 a.m. that morning, this like backwoods Georgia gal he met at Gold's Gym that day till 3 in the morning. And then the day of the fight, it was going to – we cannot get this guy to train. He trained one, one day with Gene Lowe, uh, yeah. popped his elbow, and that was it. That was his only prep. So fight day, we went to Gold's Gym, and he just did sets with 500 pounds on the bench. And then we went to Applebee's where he had the double ribs <laughs> – and he asked for a hot fudge Sunday, and he goes, make it like three. And the waitress is what? He goes, take three and put them all in the same thing. And we're, we're, look, we're looking at the guy going, it's fight day. What are you doing? He goes, oh, but I've been dieting very hard. This is how I do it on fight day. I'm like, okay, man. But um, you can imagine how yeah. it that went. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not great. Oh. Yeah. Oh. That, that was it. You'll, you'll, you'll have to watch that fight sometime. It's pretty, uh, pretty entertaining. Oh, I'm sure. gonna go back and look at that tonight. That is first one you It was Randy right Ra- 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 with the rear naked. Sorry, Dean. Because in, like, in, in boxing, some trainers, the old school trainers, say three months before or two months before a fight, you can't have sex. Months. Yeah. I never went that rule. I don't know about you, boss. What about you, no. Keen? No, no way. That's it's, it's, you know what it is. They made up that rule to keep the fighters in line. Otherwise, they might not be focused and they go after the ladies. That's why I think so. Because for, for what I understand, if you do tests about it, it actually raises testosterone <laughs> if you do have sex. So, and I see it. No, as I know it's not a good idea. I've tried it. Day of a fight, it's not a good idea. Not a good idea. Okay. Especially two hours before you go. No, not a good idea. <laughs> the legs might be a little empty. <laughs> it was fun, but it was still not the greatest idea. I it didn't think be, it was. <laughs> might, might be a little uh, bottom heavy down here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but maybe body, bo- bottom light a little bit. <laughs> Somebody asked about how quick we start warming up before a fight. Yeah. Greg, Greg, uh, Greg, Greg Hiley is our our, our our viewer. Greg and Greg's asking, yeah, before you fight, how fat, how long in advance do you start warming up? Thanks for the question, Greg. Go on, guys. I for me, I try to delay as long as possible until we get called out to be on the field because uh, it's want to do too much. Sometimes you, you let your nerves can sort of carry you, and you're working on adrenaline versus actually warming up. You're actually starting to burn your actual tank. So I try to just limit. So once I get going, you can just build up from there and continue on. I've always, I've always did like three warm ups. Like when I got there, I'd stretch a little bit and do some shadow box or break a sweat and chill out. And a little bit later, because sometimes when you're fighting, you don't know exactly when you're going on. So you need to be loose at least enough to, you know, because sometimes they'll give you, oh, you're on in five minutes, or there's a quick knockout here and there. You can be bumped quick. I mean, so I always, once I got there, at least try to get a, a couple sweats going. Yeah, and, and again, you know, because I'm stretching the whole time, you know, that is all good, and a, a body, everything is stretched, and I go, but I go, like, two fights, two fights before, 
but I go crazy. I like to have my second win before I go into the fight. So I can literally do two minute rounds full blast. Uh, people wow. will look at me and they go, you got to stop, dude. You got to stop. I say, no, I do this every day. Don't worry about it. But I had a dip one time and thankfully I still won that fight. But that just before the second went, and I'm telling you, if that guy would have known and he would have turned it up, that would have been, you know, because I felt horrible. And suddenly, I, thankfully, I got into the second wind and I go, okay, here we go. And then I, I finished him. But still, you know, I go, I never want to have that feeling again because some people can see that, you know. And then if they turn it up, not a fun. So uh, what is it? Fatigue makes uh, cowards out of man, right? <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> it's really hard. You know, if they turn it up. So, yeah, always my second win now. I'm coming in completely sweat, completely done. I got a question for you, boss. Like, um, in the corner, did you ever sit down on the stool? No. Yeah, no, I, I never sit up. Yeah. But then again, in Japan, there was we, – we had no rounds. <laughs> so, in the Thai boxing, I did it. It was a 30-minute fight, 30 minutes. But in, 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 in even in Thai boxing, I never did that. I see it. It makes no sense. It almost stops the flow, I'm thinking, also. You know, what you can do, what is a smart thing to do, is either leaning over the rope so it, it, it lifts your upper body, especially if you're breathing incorrect, yeah. you know, because then you're breathing, taking all these muscles with you, you know, so you can breathe easier. That's uh, But that's it. Yeah, sitting down, I don't think it's a good thing. What broke me of sitting down at one of my fights, it was the first six-round fighter, eight, it was scheduled for eight rounds, didn't go that long. Um, after the second round, I got, I was, I give it everything I got to get, get him out of there. I had him wobbled. I went and sat down. The, the thing hit, you know, the mat to stick, get up and I stood up and I got dizzy. Yeah. And I'm going, Oh yeah. yeah. Never sat down again. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, when I fought Holmes, I fought, you know, the 10 round fight with Holmes. I stayed and stood up the whole, whole time. Yep. I think yeah. I feel, I felt better. No, it is. It, it is better. It is better for you. Sitting down, it interrupts the whole flow. It's like you take yourself out of the game. It's like almost when you're, you're running and then you have to stop at a traffic light, right? Then you have to wait, you wait, you wait. Everybody always starts hobbling because if you completely stop, it's harder to get that start again. And as sitting, it's really like sitting. It's it's just not good. Derek, you know, that, that radiator is wide open, letting all the heat go in and out. So your blood vessels are all dilated. So when you stand up fast, sudden movements, all that blood just drops down to your lower extremities. Hard to pump it up to the brain. Boom. There you have your answer, Bean. That's what There's the happened. science behind it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because, Sam, you've got a question from Run DMG 101214. Three, pole, three Pro Bowls. It's the most dangerous play in football on the kickoff return. Um. I probably would say a uh, wedge buster. I was a wedge buster too. Uh, you're the guy, uh, it's called the, the L4, or the R5. You're right next to the kicker. And you're the one that's running down and you're going to where they used to have a probably sometimes three, four, five man wedge. And these are five of the backup linemen who are blocking for the returner. So you have to, your job is to go and, and open up a hole for everybody else to go in. And uh, firstly, you're the, you're the breach, <laughs> the human <laughs> breach tool. So instead of uh, the little ram to use on the doors to open it up, the batting ram, uh, that would be that'd be you, be the L five or the R five. So that's that's probably the most dangerous. That's why they kind of outlawed the uh, the wedges. It's, it's not good mentally for for your longevity. <laughs> these backup linemen are not little guys, I'll bet. No, not at all. Yeah, the, the wedge is made of all the backup linemen, and then you got the guys running down, either the uh, linebackers, the the backup inside linebackers, or D linemen, or you have somebody like me who was a wide receiver doing the same thing because I was a little bigger. So they say, just go in there and do that stuff, disrupt and make it happen. That sounds like all kinds of fun. Yeah, yeah it's fun when you can remember it. Those those are the good times. When you can't remember it, <laughs> it's not a, it's not too fun. Bean, did you ever think about playing football? You would have been a, Bean would have been a terror on a line, huh? Oh. I had an offer to play to, to be center for. I don't remember what team they offered it for me. Uh, Brett Favre's manager. Buzz Cook. I don't know if you know Buzz Kasim. Buzz Cook, yeah. yeah a good friend of mine. Good friend of mine. And Brett's a good friend of mine. He, he goes, Bean, if you want to play center, I'll, play, I'll get you a job right now. <laughs> I just no way. I just – I was too in the time. You would have been awesome. You got quick hands. Center has quick hands and thinks on his feet. You're the, you're the anchor of the whole team. That's exactly what he said. Trying to talk me into it. 
Yeah, you have the personality for it too. People are going to follow you. It's the, the the real leader is the center. The quarterback listens to the center. He runs the show from the point. Yeah. But I, I can't I that. It wasn't my wasn't my thing. Well, maybe in three months. Yeah. <laughs> right I'm just hoping I'm going to walk around the block in three months. I'd, I'd be tickled to death, Bob. <laughs> fighting machine. Remember the <laughs> movie again? Uh, Who gets the contract for the first photo shoot, the photo spread? We go on People Magazine and Vogue Time. There you go. <laughs> it's possible. I Q. What is it? Is it what is that? Uh, what is that? Cool Q, Q, with the Q. Uh, GQ. Omega. GQ. GQ. Yeah. GQ. GQ. Yep. GQ. This. You see, we there with like the suit, and the, and the suit a little bit open, and the freaking abs in the middle. And there's Bean standing. Oh yeah. It's oh yeah. Hundred percent. Virgin uh, olive oil on the body. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. Yeah. I mean, I can see it. I can see it with the red, white, and blue. Hey, guys. Now, I told them when I weighed. None of them believed me. They said, there ain't no way you weigh that much. But I can't tell you how much because I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I'll stick around. I don't think I weighed as much, as much as I actually did. I'm excited to see the finale. Yep. Me too. Yeah. What did you want to ask uh, Rick? Sorry? You want to say something? You said something? Well, yeah, well, 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 we have a few minutes left. I want to ask uh, Bean about two of his uh, fellow heavyweights and boss, two of your fellow Europeans, the Klitschko brothers. Uh, oh, this is a serious subject now. But, yeah. um, God, what what's, what's going on in, in these guys' heads right now? Because Bean and Boss, I could Boss, I could see you in that same position immediately if that were the situation in Holland. Um, not that it ever would be, because Holland is mm. Holland, of course. But yeah. um, I mean, Bean, if you could talk to uh, to Vladimir and Vitaly right now, what would you say to them? You know, it's it's kind of scary over there right now. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it's 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 terrifying. I'll be honest with you, right? Yeah, and you got you, know, you got these guys who are heavyweight champions of the world. They're um, apparently they're worth many million, many tens of millions of dollars each. Have done well in their careers, and it'd be now time they're. To get that out, honestly. Sorry. It'd be time that it'd be time for them to get the hell out of town right now. Well, but they've they've done the opposite though. They they've purposefully armed themselves and gone to the front lines, and I mean to me that's the most. I heard it. There's no way in hell. What's that? Mean? If I get up and go, if I go fight right now for my country, I would. Yep. I mean, yep. You got you got to back your country. I mean, I, I'm. I was at I was at a show and this one kid was saying, "Yeah, they they draft me. I'm not going. I'm going. No man, they ain't how you need to look at. It. You got you got to think of your kids, your grandkids. You're, you're fighting for them. You're not fighting for yourself. Yeah. Yep. You're fighting for you know, your country." That's, yeah. that's my view on it. Yeah, they, they yeah. got a, another picture of a whole football team that changed their jerseys the day before, and then they all put on the military gear, and they were fighting for uh, Ukraine as well. And I had somebody on the timeline, uh, social media, was like, oh, I bet American uh, athletes wouldn't do that. And they're like, first of all, you know, the, as well as everybody else do, that anybody that is an athlete at a professional level loves any type of competition. When you're talking about world championships – not to poke fun at war, but that's what you're essentially fighting for is a world championship. Everybody is so pro country in America. I mean, people are fighting for things less than that. You're talking about a whole country that love to shoot guns at, at boards and deers and go hunting. You know what I mean? That's just in American blood to stand up and be defiant. So for people to, I mean, it's just sad to see that people poke that and try to put two and two together. Like Ukraine has a bunch of people who love that country, who are fighting for their country and the love of their country, and they're showing you what the human element is. It's not so much that it's just because it's Ukraine. You go to anybody's house and try to kick down the door, it's like the big bad wolf, man, they're coming out with a machine gun. And I'm gonna <gasps> shoot you. It's just that's just how I mean, it's not American, it's not Ukrainian. I think it's just humans. Like protect your own at all costs. All right, one thing I do got to show y'all this this is a picture from a year and a half ago. Into now, like last week, I took this picture. Let me see if I can get it on the. Whoa, jeez, 
the same guy. That is a huge mm -hmm. difference. And that's a year Who's apart? That? Yeah, it's a year apart. Whoa, Whoa dude. How many parts were there? I'm not sure. <laughs> now this picture, this picture was took two years ago. Whoa. Your heart is thanking you right now. Uh, my yeah. heart rate's great. I mean, it's like, yeah, they, they were shocked. Yeah. How does, wow. that, how does that overall feel like like the, the low back, your your knees, your hips? Like, do you feel uh, more energy throughout the day because you're carrying around less weight. Like I know a lot of the linemen when they retire, they they drop the weight and they feel like they're just so much more energy because they're not expending so much. How does it feel like moving around day to day? Well, I had a I don't I mean I've been having to use the scooter chair because of my back and my hip. Yeah. So that's why I'm here doing this to, to be able to get up and chase the ground kids. Oh yeah. You know, but uh, yeah, it's it's. It, the back hurts. I mean, the, the, the it's like putting a a 60, 70 pound, hundred pound backpack on a lot of people. You know, that's what I'm that's what I'm dealing with. Wow. Yeah. 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 I, I, I try to maintain mine. I've have I have annular tears and uh, I've got uh, bulging discs and all kind of nerve damage in my my back, low back, and maybe maybe DDP. The next <laughs> will get you down here. Oh, <laughs> I tell you what, you does amazing stuff. I'm not joking. I've been hitting my bass rooting the uh, right uppercut, left hook, and I'll be getting yeah. it, man. Keep that that range of motion that back. But uh, I mean, yeah, I, my hats off to you because I know that the, that pain that you're dealing with right now, and the fact that you're actively doing something about it, it's it just speaks wonders to the the character you have, man. That's that's but, a, what, me. That's a tough what, one. You just you know, know it's it's I mean, I, it, it's helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're you're pain. Oh, hey, by the way, did you hear about Cain yeah, Velasquez? One more for yeah. One more for That's my belt. I'm a, that's the belt. Look at that. Jeez. Dude, you're going to be back in beast mode in no time. Well, I've, I've already been. Well, when are you going to start fighting again? Anyhow, I'm done. Well, yeah. you know, Personally, being all really excited to see where you are 90 days from now, it's going to be yeah, remarkable. Too. And you know, we're we're close to the end, boss. I um, I saw a post from my friend Shooter Tony Jones about Kane yeah. Velasquez. But I didn't really understand what was going on there. What happened with Kane? Okay, so somebody close to him in his family, uh, I believe it was a girl, got uh, molested by some guy. And daughter led you right. And he shot the guy, but the guy survived apparently. But they they got him for that. So you know, okay, the, the nicest guy on the planet, you know. So it's for him to make that step, I go. He, he, that's got to be emotion because you know, if, if you thing like that, I'm not saying that's a good thing to do, but come on, you know. So uh, I hope it's going to be okay. I really hope it's going to be okay. Yeah, allegedly, allegedly, it was his daughter, and it happened over a hundred times, over a course of a hundred times. I think it was it was repeated abuse that uh, they allegedly happened. So I guess he uh, shot at the guy. I didn't know if he hit him or not. Did he? Did he end up uh, shooting the guy? He ended up shooting him. I, I think yeah, but he uh, the, the guy survived. Full point out Yeah, he, he he was hit. But oh man, it was a daycare, right? Yeah. I'm surprised, boss, that Kane wouldn't have put his hands on him. That's interesting. That's that's the thing. Would have gone after him that way. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, but that, but that's what you see. That's that's emotions, you know. When that suddenly comes yeah. out, if he fighting it out on the day of the fight, you can be the nicest guy. Did you ever see him angry? Did you ever see him? never during fighting? He's the calmest dude on the planet, you know. But that's you know. Well, every every guy will tell you the same thing, you know. You touch the daughter, the, the, but it doesn't matter. The kids, the family. Yeah. Wow. You gotta watch out. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know that's what it was. Wow. Well best best to Kane. He is a really nice yeah. guy. You're right. Super good dude. Super yeah, good. It's, dude. it's difficult to see that just to anybody like that. Like, yeah, see that. It's just, it's just, wow. Yeah, yep. that's that's a, that's an international no no. That's a universal oh, God. No, yeah. No, yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. Those are the animals, not the other way around. Yeah. So that that's a subject. There's no no two sides of the coin on that one. That's for sure. That's yeah, it. Yeah, couldn't agree with you guys more. With one response. 
Um, guys, we're we're at that point, and I know we're flip flopping and jumping around a lot, but I want to go back to that last subject about the, the Klitschko's. I'm fascinated with what these guys have done. They did, they didn't need to do what they're doing. Boss, you're a fellow European. You've experienced some of the same your country, not you personally necessarily, experienced some of the same stuff that Ukraine is right now to to a degree or another. Um, if I don't know if you know the Klitschko's or not, but whether you do or not, what what would you what would you say to them or or encourage them to do at this time? Yeah, but but listen, this is not publicity stunt for these guys. There's nothing. They have no. all the money. They don't need anything. So for them to do that is 100% because the heart is in it. And I, I you got to respect that. You know, it's, it, I listen, I, with the boxing wise, you know, in the early, earlier on, I wasn't that super excited because to me it was a little bit more of pointing. But then when he fought Joshua and, you know, and that fight and the way he got dropped and then he came back and then he dropped Joshua and then, this, and then I, I got a, the utmost respect for him. I go like, man, at his age to do that, what he did there, that was like, that was a big thing. And now to hear this, man, it's uh, it's really amazing. I'm, I, yeah, I, I hope that if ever something like that would happen, that that I will have the ball, so to say, oh, yeah. and, you know, because that's very commendable. I tell you that. Yeah. I, I, if, I'm wrong, if I'm not wrong, the re Ukrainian president is also on the front line fighting. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, Zelensky. Yep. Yeah, and and being Vitali is actually the mayor of Kiev, the big the mm -hmm. capital city. He's the elected yeah. mayor of that city. The whole thing is just absolutely crazy. It's really I, I think it, I think it's remarkable. It, it's amazing to see the, the heart, the love they have for their country. I also don't think it's very strategic. I think from a strategic standpoint, you want to assess what your ability is to help the maximum amount of people, and whether they need a spiritual leader in the front on the front lines, being that that focal uh, focus focal point. That's one thing. But then also, after this is over, you're going to need people like Vitaly Klitschko to, you know, speak to the people who they can trust and fall into a, a leadership role and, and lead people and, and give out uh, monetary, you know, help for, for people that need. You know what I'm saying? Just you're able to do so much more along down the line, especially with the president as well. I mean, it's, it's I understand where it comes from. Again, though, the heart is there. You have passion. But like like uh, Boss was saying, you, you practice your routine over and over and over again to where. You follow your routine. You're not going to your, 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 take you out of your game. You can, you can get caught. Yep. I, I totally agree. Totally agree with that on all points. Yeah, that's a that's a very good point. Yeah, I just wanted to get your guys' take on that. I know all you guys would be there. Um, just curious what you had to say about the Klitschko. So thanks, thanks for that. Appreciate it, um, guys. Next week, I think we should take a we should take the last look at Butterbean. Because we won't recognize him seven days from now. Going to be a whole different person. Full head of hair, 100 pounds lighter. So here he is. You're going to be green bean. <laughs> green bean. Green bean. Real slim. Hope I'm still smiling next week, Greg. I hope so, man. I'm really glad you're there. I, I've been I've been wanting this for you for a long time. I, I think it's uh, going to be amazing, the results. I'm really happy you're there. I mean, I'll be honest. I don't. I didn't realize how much that I, my wife does for me. You know, like a lot. You know, when you gotta unload your suitcase and put all your clothes in, you know, for three months worth, and you know, put them all up, and you know, it's things you, you count on your spouse for. Which I've been married thirty six, thirty seven years now. So, yeah, you you don't realize how much you you, you count on somebody. Yep, that's huge. And you, you, got, you got a good one in. Uh, she's she's an awesome person. Uh, you've got a good one in. in hey, anybody can take me for thirty five years. They're they're a saint. I I will bless them. <laughs> you get the blessing. Say thank you. That's my wife. Thirty years. So she's also a saint. Let me tell you that. But you know, we uh, maybe it's a because we. I mean, you were talking about this on the show, so that's why I'm saying it. But. Your your sex level is pretty high, and now you're going to completely cut off. How is that going to happen? Well, uh, you know, there's life. <laughs> <laughs> the way he looked away, huh? Oh, no, no. <laughs> oh, well, funny. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. Break it in half now. You know, it's it's happened in the past. You know. You need a little motivation. <laughs> awesome. I got a Barbie doll here. You know, let me rip out. 
<laughs> Let me rip out my bold friend right here. <laughs> oh, man. All right, guys. Oh. I'm for you. Yeah. All it's right. We're reaching new highs today. We're reaching new highs. Oh, well, um, guys, yeah. good night. Kasim, it's really good yeah, to no, see you good. again. Um, will you will you wrap us up and take us home for the night? Yes, sir. To all you guys out there, it's better to be kind to be tough. But when they won't let you be kind, you better be tough. Protect your neck. Nice, I love it. Good night, guys. <laughs> Godspeed. Oh, I love y'all. Y'all have a good night. Be easy. Sleep well. <laughs>